Yeah. yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. We gotta get him in the net. Yeah, you saw Ryan's. Nice fish on BFS. Hello everyone. Back at it again with my little yellow kayak. And for this video, I thought we'd do something a little different. I wanna talk about how to build confidence fishing jerk baits. For whatever reason, jerk baits seem to be a category of lures that a lot of people just aren't confident throwing them. And maybe they had a bad day or maybe they just ended up catching weeds all the time. For whatever reason, a lot of people aren't very confident in throwing them. So I thought I'd talk about a couple different ways to build confidence throwing jerk baits. The short answer is you just got to throw them and figure out which ones fish best in which conditions. But that's not really helpful advice. You know, I feel like if I broke it down a little bit better um, and gave you some concrete specific tips on how to do just that, it might be a little more effective. So the first way to do that, build confidence in jerk baits, is to find a small pond which is loaded with small bass and this pond fits the bill there's a lot of bass in here and a lot of pickerel there's also some perch and sunfish there used to be some herring but I haven't seen the herring in a little bit I think the bass and pickerel ate them all so this is a great spot to uh, for me to test out new jerk baits See if I like them. See if they're slow float or slow sink or they suspend perfectly. If they got a lot of body roll to them. How they dart. Yeah. So that's about the kind of fish that I catch here a lot. Small bass. Uh, these are standard 110 size jerk baits. That one I think is a jackal re-range. That's a bait that I usually only fish early in the season. It's got a lot of body roll, a lot of flash, and I find when the water gets colder, it's just a little bit too much for the fish. Pickerel seem to like it right up until ice, but um, for bass, it just seems like a little bit too much. The other thing I do in a kayak is I tend to fish spinning rods in a kayak. I just find it easier uh, in the crawdad or a tin boat, I'll fish, um, I really like that medium uh, Shimano X-Pride 610. It's a little bit shorter rod, so it's easier for me to fish um, with the rod pointed towards the water. I don't like it as much in the kayak, so I, I tend to use spinning gear in the kayak just a little bit easier for me to fish in the kayak. I'm lower to the water already. So for fishing jerk baits, it's nice to have really specialized dialed in gear, but you don't need it. Uh, so any medium power spinning or bait casting rod with uh, somewhat of a quick tip will be okay to fish jerk baits with. I've done it for years. It's not ideal. You don't have the perfect bend on a lot of these rods for fishing a jerk bait or protecting light wire hooks from being bent out, but you can do it. And so when you're starting out and just fishing jerk baits, don't worry about having the perfect rod right away. What you want to do is just get comfortable working the baits, having them do what you want them to do. And catching fish. You don't need to worry about the size of the fish, what kind of species they are. Um, I mean I'm cutting some of these parts out but I was catching fish one after another on this trip and I was playing with some jerk baits I haven't fished a lot. I threw uh, a mega bass 110 plus one gets down a little bit deeper one thing I don't like about really deep diving crankbaits is some of the jerk baits have the line tie on the bill and they end up acting more like crankbaits than jerk baits. 
So if I'm going to fish a crankbait, I want to fish a, a standard crankbait. If I'm going to fish a jerkbait, I want to fish a bait with the line tie on the nose. All right, I switch ponds. And this is another strategy for building confidence in fishing jerk baits. What I'm doing is I'm looking for fish with a lipless. And then when I find some fish, I'm going to switch to a jerk bait and really slow down. So let's say I wasn't confident fishing jerk baits at all. This is a good strategy because you can use baits that you're confident in to locate fish and then put down the lipless or whatever it is, could be a chatterbait, whatever, and pick up a jerk bait and see if you can uh, get a few more fish to go on the jerk bait. I'll get this fish released in just a second. But what I noticed uh, is that they're pretty far offshore, at least this bass, um, in some deeper weeds. And I was kind of yo-yoing that, that lipless above the weeds. A few casts later, I picked up uh, a Minimax chatterbait. I'm going to try shallow just to see if I can find anything shallow, anything at all. And that gives me an idea where I can throw the jerk bait next. Or maybe if I find them shallow, I'll use a shallower running jerk bait. If I find them all deep, I'll use a deeper running jerk bait. Maybe I'll have two jerk baits. Uh, this is a little guy. We're going in the wrong direction in terms of size, but at least there's uh, a few fish up shallow. And then I've moved offshore. I've got my ultralight rod. I'm going to see if I can pick up any panfish out here. So panfish are another way to build confidence fishing jerk baits. You just have to downsize. So say a standard 110 jerk bait is what people use mostly for bass uh, with a medium power rod. If you're going to fish smaller jerk baits, you might want a, a medium light power or even a light power rod. And on the other end, like a, like a pointer 128, it's a big jerk bait. Uh, I fish that with a medium heavy power rod. So you just want to match the size of the bait to uh, the power rod that you need to fish it effectively. That last fish was uh, a crappie. And what I did after I, I had a quick release on that crappie is I picked up my BFS rod and a, a little Daiwa jerk bait. And it doesn't take too long. And I got a hook and a little bass. I was actually trying to see if I could catch more panfish out here. And a bass came up and took a swipe of that jerk bait. I only got him by the, the tail hook there. But he still made it in the boat. That's not a big fish. But I'm just trying to put together um, a little bit of a pattern. I was trying to see if. They would all be shallow or they all be out deep and it looks like they're kind of everywhere which doesn't help me too much. So I'm going to fish everywhere. I'm going to try out deep. I'm going to try mid depth. I'm going to try shallow and see if I can put together a few fish on the jerk bait. I'm still fishing the smaller jerk bait. I'm giving it a couple hard twitches and then I, I let it pause. One of the key things about fishing a jerk bait is you want to hit that jerk bait on the slack. So you reel up a little bit of line, just enough so that when you go to hit the jerk bait with the rod, you end up um, you end up going from dead stop to sharp jerks. I'm doing it right next to the boat right now because I had a fish following me, and that was just a little yellow perch. But um, you want to go from dead stop, hard cut. And you can throw in pauses right there, or you can do a couple cuts in a row. That's one of the keys to fishing jerk baits: is um, dead stop to hard cut. I think that's where a lot of people might go wrong, and and then they don't catch a lot of fish, and then they lose confidence. So just remember, you want to hit the baits on the slack. That little jerk bait is actually a, a whippersnapper. 
It's made by 13 Fishing. I'm not sure if they make it anymore, but it's a good little jerk bait. The one I had was a slow floater, so I had to mess with the split rings and the hooks to get it to suspend. I'll list that in the video description, all the modifications. But once I got it to suspend, you know, it was game on. And that's a pretty nice bass I got on there right now. So that's another key. You want the jerk baits you're fishing with to suspend or to be slow sinkers. What I don't like is slow float because this time of year, if you fish a slow float jerk bait, it's going to rise up away from the fish, and if they're cold, they won't chase it. If you're going to fish a jerk bait in the summer, which people do, they work all year round. A slow floater can sometimes get them. But I only fish jerk baits in the colder months. There's plenty of other lures to fish during summer. So for me, all I want in a jerk bait is either slow sink or suspending perfectly. So it's very important for me to get the, the weighting right. Don't be afraid to go with heavier hooks than what came with the bait. Don't be afraid to go with heavier split rings. You're just trying to dial in uh, the action of the bait the way the way you want it, the way the fish want it, really, but the way you want it to present to the fish. Hey, that's not a bad one on a little jerk bait in a BFS rod. Maybe three, three and a half pounds. I got a little bit of wind here. That usually helps the bite, no matter what it is. But uh, jerk baits tend to work better than most baits, even when there's no wind. But I find just generally, whatever I'm fishing for, fresh or salt, any time of year, I want just a little bit of wind to break up the surface of the water, and that seems to help me get more bites. But if there's no wind, jerk baits are one of the few baits that'll still catch them, so don't be afraid to throw it even if there's no wind and you're not getting bites on other things. That's a white perch that hit that little whippersnapper. The, uh, the other size of the whippersnapper is a bigger bait. I think it's a standard 110 size. The one I got also was a slow floater. Uh, but the hooks are already kind of big on it. And I haven't quite got that one dialed in the way I like it. Uh, so more work to do there. But it, it needs more weight. Otherwise it just rises up. And the colder the water is the more pronounced that rise will be. So basically I can't fish the larger size as it is right now until I dial the hooks in just right while well, the hooks and the split rings. You can also add lead wire to jerk, bite, jerk baits on the hook. I don't really like doing that. Uh, usually it's a fine tuning thing and uh, lead wire ends up or some non-lead wire ends up being too much weight. You have to be really careful with how much weight you add to jerk baits, otherwise you can mess up the action. So I'm just talking about small, small differences will will turn a jerk bait from a slow floater into a fast sink. And I don't really want a fast sink either. I want either suspending or slow sink. That white perch got me a little bit with his gill plate, but I will survive and keep fishing. Here's a closer look at that little whippersnapper. Small jerk bait, maybe three inches. It's got a deep diving bill on it. I upgraded those hooks and split rings to get it to suspend just right. And now I love it. All right, we're at a third pond now. These are different days, but I'm still fishing a jerk bait. This time I've got a, a Daiwa DB jerk bait on small jerk bait maybe three inches quarter of an ounce they don't make this one either anymore but you could substitute maybe a small rapella x wrap or something similar like that some of the new bfs jerk baits would work too i've got green water there's a late season algae bloom here and it's it's kind of disgusting but um, you can still catch fish in these conditions on a jerk bait a lot of people will tell you if you don't have clear water you can't fish a jerk bait 
That is not true. They will still hit it even if the water is uh, as green as slime. Um, it might not be the best presentation, but they will still hit it. And what I'm doing here is I'm fishing for panfish. So that's another way to build confidence in jerk baits. We touched on it on the last pond, but here I'm specifically targeting panfish. And if they're big enough and you fish a small enough jerk bait, you can have a great time catching panfish on a jerk bait. And the idea is just to get the timing down, make sure you're hitting the jerk bait on the slack. Um, make sure your cadence is proper so usually I do two or three twitches and then a pause if the fish are slow I'll I'll make that pause 10 seconds more the water is not too cold yet it's probably around mid 50s so I'm getting away with a little bit faster retrieve the other thing is sometimes panfish will keep biting um, you know aggressively even when the water temperatures drop and the bass slow down a little bit and you can have a great time multi-species fishing, um, you know, even if the bass are a little slow, you can supplement your catch with white perch like these are. A little bit later on, I was catching crappie. So, yeah, you're just trying to get the mechanics of jerkbait fishing down. And once you do that and catch some fish, any kind of fish, you can build confidence in throwing the bait and then start catching bigger bass and whatever else you want to catch. The other nice thing about panfish is that a lot of times in the fall, I'm fishing in the fall, panfish school up into to big schools. Sometimes it'll be all white perch, sometimes it'll be all yellow perch, sometimes it'll be a mix of different things, crappie up top, Maybe uh, sunfish in the middle and white perch in the middle and yellow perch towards the bottom. And so you can have a great time once you find these schools, especially mixed schools of fish. Sometimes there's even bass mixed in with the panfish. Not Generally not huge bass, but um, uh, smaller bass will mix in with a school of panfish. Bigger bass tend to be on the outside of the schools of panfish. But anyway, if you can find them, you can have a ball catching them. And I, I was catching these white perch uh, pretty well for a little bit. These aren't giant white perch, but they're, they're fun. And um, yeah, if you're just trying to learn how to fish a jerk bait, they make a good target. They're pretty agreeable fish. Other thing I was doing um, when fishing these little jerk baits for panfish is I was using some scent on the jerk bait. That can be a big confidence boost too. Um, whatever scent you like. Uh, today I was using smelly jelly but if you like uh, procure or you like the bait fuel stuff whatever you like um, sometimes that helps seal the deal. Jerk baits are, are one of those baits where generally you're going to get hit on the paws and I feel like the longer the fish have to stare at the bait, the more scent helps. So for example, I almost never fish uh, top water with scent because the fish aren't staring at the bait, they're watching it work. That last fish was about a two or three pound bass and he, uh, he bent out the hooks on that little jerk bait. I had upgraded those hooks too. Those were owner ST36s, I think. Yeah, and he bent out one of those hooks and, uh, and got free. So I picked up uh, my X-Pride rod. I'm in the crawdad, so it's a little easier to fish a bait caster. I point that rod towards the water. I'm up high. I'm standing up. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd take a few casts with a bigger jerk bait. This is a 13 Fishing Loco Special. That's another good jerk bait. I just changed the hooks around a little bit. Um, but I really like it. It casts far, um, suspends well, and uh, I got another fish uh, coming out of deeper water. No, still there. Part 
In general, bigger jerk baits will get a little bit deeper than um, smaller jerk baits. And I think I was getting a little deeper because I caught a yellow perch. Typically the yellow perch are going to be closer to the bottom than the white perch. So that's okay, I'll take anything on this day. Got to watch out for some of these panfish. They'll they'll stick you with the hooks if they can. There's three sets of hooks on these larger jerk baits, and um, yeah, you just got to be careful. Always seems like the the small ones are out to get me. Yep, yeah, that's the yellow perch. See ya. All right. Well, I'm getting my jerk bait free of the net. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to wrap up this video. So thank you all for watching. I'll list all the gear in the video description. I hope this was helpful. If you, uh, you know, you don't fish a lot of jerk baits or you don't have confidence in them, I hope you'll try some of these ideas and, um, and maybe you'll have some good luck with them. All right. Thanks again. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.